Okay, so in this video, I'm going to continue with the topic one practice questions on electrostatics, and we're focusing on forces, superposition, and Coulomb's law stuff. So looking at this question over here, you see that we have a Q1, a Q2, and a Q3. This is minus charge, minus 8.1, and this is a positive charge, and this is also a positive charge. Now, the importance is you need to know what's happening with the, the forces when it comes to this. So it's asking me to find the net force on Q3. I want to know what's going to happen to this charge over here. Before I do anything, I can see that this will repel. So that will be going that way. This could be one of my forces. However, look, this is a minus. He is attracted to the minus. So there is a little bit of an attraction as well. So we have two forces. And I can name them anything I really want. So I can call this F1. I can call that F2. Idea is you need to calculate F1. So if I was to calculate F1, I can just do that now. I can do K, Q1, Q3, 1 and 3. That is for this force, the attraction force between these two, divided by their distances. And their distance, D2, it says here, 2 point. 62. They're not trying to trick me, are they? No, it is fully 2.62, and it's in meters. Nice of them to give me the mercy. R squared. All right, I don't even know why I did that. I didn't even put the numbers in. So you will solve that. Let's, okay, fine, we'll do it. 9 times 10 to the 9. I'm going to multiply that by Q1, which is here. We don't use the minus. It's a vector, absolute values only. We're doing vector addition to find the direction. So we don't use the minus. I'm going to write... 8.1 times 10 to the minus 6, and I'm going to multiply that by the Q3, 2.16, oh my god, that's not a 6, wait, okay, we're back, 6, times 10 to the minus, now look at that, pico, pico is minus 12, a little tricky one there, so there we go, divide that by the distance of 2.16 meters. If you solve that, you should get the answer of, let's see, I can't find it, let's do it now, 2.29 times 10, run out of space, forward planning is not good, to the power of minus 8 newtons. So I have one of the forces. I can quickly now find the other force as well. I will solve it, finding between Q2 and Q3. So I will now do F2. F2 equals uh, K, Q2, Q3 over R squared. I'm putting the numbers in. 9 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by Q2 and Q3, which is 2 times 10 to the minus, or 2.16 times 10 to the minus 6, multiplied by 2.16 times 10 to the minus 12, divided by their distances together. So essentially, I'll just have to subtract these two because this is 1.7 and this is 2.6. Of course, this must be 1.7 minus 2.6. You put that into your calculator, and I'll let you solve that yourself because the video's going to take too long otherwise. Once you do that, hopefully you should get 5.06 times 10 to the minus 8 neutral, not neutrons, where did that come from? Newtons. All right. I now have two forces, this one and this one. What am I supposed to do with them? Do I add them or do I subtract them? Let's have a look. They're acting in opposite directions. Because they're acting in opposite directions, I will have to subtract them. The final task here will simply be F big minus F small, really. F1 minus F2. You just subtract the two values. Once you do that, you should get your final answer. So it's basically uh, this minus this. I could write 2 minus 1. That's not important. You will get this answer here. Okay, great. So moving on to here, three electrons are at the vertices of an equilateral triangle. That means all the angles are equal inside it. The length is one, and the length is all equal. And what is the magnitude of the net force on each electron? Okay, so each electron, you only really need to do the calculation two times um, for you know, F1 and F2. Each electron will feel two forces acting on them. So that one, and there's that one, and there's that one. And they're all electrons. So that's a, that's a that's a Q, 
that's my Q, and that's my Q as well. Okay. Being equilateral, this is one nanometer. That's fine. They're all one nanometer. So that we use this as a, I'm just going to do it like this. That, that, and that means they're all one nanometer, okay? Then inside, if it's equilateral, the angle is 60 degrees. They're all 60 degrees, okay? Now the idea is, whichever one you pick, there is going to be a horizontal and a vertical component of it. Because this is kind of going to be, let's say there, there are electrons, so let's say this is going to go that way and this will repel with this one. You can see that it's going at an angle and it's going kind of a little bit to the right and a little bit up. This has an X component and it has a Y component. The exact same thing happens with the repelling section of these two. They will also repel. This is going to repel that way. Now the idea here is the same. It's going to go a little bit to the left and a little bit up. So from the repelling force, this is the X for the second force, and this is the Y of the second force. You can maybe realize that these two X's, if you noticed, these two X's will cancel each other out. The left component and the right component will cancel each other out. So you don't even need to calculate it. Otherwise, you would have to use the uh, H cos theta and H sine theta from grade 11, if you remember. Horizontal components is cos, vertical components is usually sine. Okay, fine. Now that I've figured out that I can just skip that, I need to find the vertical components. Um, how am I supposed to do that? First thing I'm, I'm going to do is I need to calculate the hypotenuse first. I need to calculate this hypotenuse and even this hypotenuse. In fact, you only really need to calculate it one time because it is only one force and it's going to be equal on the other side as well. So I can quickly calculate one of the forces and then there will be two of them. So, and they're both, look at that, they're both going up. They're both going up, which means I can add the two y's at the end. So, let's find the value of the force. I'm going to bring it over here. I see a little space over here, so I'm going to do it right here. F equals K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. No problem. 9 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by being an electron. You know the charge of the electron. It's uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Times 10 to the minus 19. Um, squared, or I can just write it again, 1.6 times 10, let's keep it simple, the minus 19, and then I'm going to divide all of that by 1 nano, 1 nano is 1 times 10 to the power of, this is, that's annoying, times 10 to the minus nano 9, nano negative 9, I always remember that, nano minus 9, okay, putting that into the calculator, you should get 2.3 times 10 to the minus 10. All right, that is the value of my hypotenuse. This number here, this is the value of this. If I now want to find the y axis, I can just now do 2.2, so this is gonna be the fy part, 2.3 times 10 to the minus 10, and I'm gonna multiply that by sine and the angle, so well, the angle is actually supposed to be, well, this angle here. So is there a way we can figure it out? Well, yeah, we can. This is 60. This is 180. 180 minus 60 gives me 120. 120 will be here and here. So I will divide that by 2. That also becomes 60. Opposite angle theorem, if that's 60, this is 60. You'll find that they all break up into 60s. So, yeah, you didn't even need to do that. Just write 60. Sine of 60, make sure your calculator is in degrees. And I'm doing it twice. So I can do it two times, or I'll just times it by two, just to simplify it a little. Once I've done the Y section, I will get the final answer of 3.98 something something times 10 to the minus 10. Newtons. This is in the y direction. The x is cancel. You would do the cos here, a cos here, opposite directions. They will be equal forces and you will just get a zero. So that answer would be C. Done. All right. This one, two charges on the corner. The first charge is this. Now we have different charges. And you're trying to find the magnitude of the electric force on the third charge. So this is the next extension of this. You remember when I said you cancel these out? Well, you do the same thing here, but it will not become zero. So it's going to be the, exactly the same thing here. So I can just speed through this, maybe. Um, I have more space here. So how can I do it? I will do it like this. I'll keep some space. One, 
two, and three. Uh, what's going to happen is on this we will have uh, like this, like this, and like this. We have three charges and the equ equilateral so zero point twenty five. Uh, and the angle here is 60 because it's the same idea as before. This is the third charge. I'll call this Q3. And this is the third charge, okay? This is the third corner, okay? So I'm going to say that this is, I'm not going to write Q3. I'll write the number. We have the number of it. Let's write the number, which is 2.5 micro, micro coulombs. Okay, fine. The first charge over here is 4.5 micro coulombs. And the second charge over here is 3.2 microcoulombs. They're all positive charges. None of them have a minus in front of them. Okay, so this will have the same two forces. He will uh, repel that way and repel that way, just like we did up here. There is a little bit of a horizontal force and a vertical force, horizontal force and a vertical force. So again, the x's are going in opposite directions, so I would subtract them. The y's are going in the same direction, I would add them. Before I do that, I need to actually find the forces, don't I? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to find the force. I'm going to calculate it right now. And so I'm going to do F equals K. Q1, Q, I'll call this one 3, the third charge. Q3 over R squared. And then I'll do the other one. This will be F1, this will be F2. Equals K, Q2, and Q3 over R squared. 2 and 3 divided by R squared. The R is the same. And it's 0. Point, did I say it's 0 0.25? 0.25, yes, 0 0.25 meters, okay. So putting the values in, if I was to do Q1 and Q3, I would get um, this number. So I'm, I'm not gonna write it out. I'm gonna ask you to write it out if you want to do it. I'll write nine times 10 to the nine multiplied by 4.5 times 10 to the minus six multiplied by 2.5 times 10 to the minus six. So these are the values. Divide that by 0 0.25 squared. By doing that, you will get 1.618 uh, two newtons. F2, you will do the exact same thing. Nine times 10 to the nine multiplied by Q2, um, which is 3.2 times 10 to the minus six multiplied by 2.5 times 10 to the minus six divided by r squared, 0.25 squared, you'll get something along the lines of uh, 1.156 um, newtons, right? Now, I have the two values. What do I do? The x and the y, I need to break it up into x and y. This is the x and this is the y. So I will do uh, f1 cos of 60, and I'm going to subtract it. For the x section, I will have to subtract it. I'll do minus, I will do F2 cos 60. The number here is going to be this one up here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here. I will write it out like this um, in one go. I will do uh, 1.618. I'll leave it at that. I can round it later. Uh, 1.618 cos 60. I'll put that in a little bracket. Minus the next one, 1.15. 1.15 cos 60 in a bracket. I'll come back to you like that. Uh, once I do that, if I put that number into my calculator, I should get a total of uh, 0 equals 0 0.23. I'll keep it at 3. Newtons. Very nice. 2.23 Newtons. Amazing. Next, I'm going to do the Y. Now, they're going up, both of them. I will add them. F1 sine of the angle plus F2 sine of the angle. I'm just going to quickly do that here. F1, again, 1.618 sine of the angle, which we know is 60, and I'm going to plus, put a little bracket, plus F2, this one here, 1.156 times 10, not times 10, where did that come from? Uh, cos, not cos, sine 
60. I think I'm getting a bit tired. I'm going to have to stop after this one. Uh, sign 60. I'll close that little bracket. Well, I should open it first. Put that into the calculator, exactly the same thing I did here, but I've changed it to sign, and I'm adding because they're going in the same direction. By doing that, you should get the final answer. In this case, uh, hopefully, about 2.4, around 2.4 Newtons. Almost done. We're not actually done yet. Uh, what we're going to have to do now is the final, final thing. So this goes a little bit left, a little bit right. One is stronger than the other. So maybe I can make a new triangle. Maybe it'll be a little bit that way and that way. This is the two Y's together. This is the two X's together. It doesn't really matter if it's that way or like that. It doesn't matter. Because all I'm doing is I'm going to find the magnitude of the hypotenuse. I'm going to have to find the magnitude of the hypotenuse so you don't need to bog yourself down into which direction is going, which one's stronger. The idea is just Pythagoras. All I'm going to do is use Pythagoras. I will find the final answer, which will be C squared equals A squared, A squared plus B squared. This is A and B, or A and B, it doesn't matter which one's which, okay? It's going to get the same answer anyway. So by doing C, I will do the square root of, and, and these two numbers, 0 0.23 squared plus 2.4 squared. The answer should be bigger than them both, so you'll probably get something like, I think, the final answer it should be 2.41. 2.41 mm, newtons, and is that up here? To, yes, it's right here. C is the answer. Now that took quite a long time, so I will stop here and I'll continue these in the next video.